Today was crazy. I spent most of the afternoon working on a video and it just didn't work out. HVAC in this building never stops running. So I can never get quiet. So I did this whole video, it's terrible. So I'm not gonna put out a video for Friday. It'll have to be Saturday. Not happy right now. Okay, I've gotta be a little bit quiet because Lynn is still asleep. It's just about 6.20. One thing I like about starting my day so early is I get to see the sunrise every morning. And Lynn has created such a garden environment, like a little paradise in our backyard, on our back deck. I can go out there and sit with my coffee and just, it's like a little bit of heaven right here on earth. I mean, well, come on, I'll show you. <laughs> shaved. <laughs> I've done all the things you do when you get ready to start the day. And uh, I'm going to go get some coffee. I would go to Rebel 77, my own coffee shop, but we don't yet open early enough on Saturdays for me to get coffee first thing in the morning. I have to go to somewhere else. Now, what is this thing? That is our cinnamon roll waffle. It is a Cinnabon cinnamon roll we put into a waffle iron. And then after it cooks for three minutes, we put on the icing and then caramel drizzle on top. Super, super tasty. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yes, right? Don't act like you would have made a different choice. story I wanted to tell you yesterday. It was 1917 and this young reporter goes to interview Andrew Carnegie, one of the, if not the richest man in the world at the time. I can't remember if he was actually the richest man in the world at that point or not. I think maybe he was. Uh, this young man was a reporter at a small obscure newspaper that hardly anybody had ever heard of. He got this interview somehow and it was supposed to be 20 minutes and it lasted several hours. And before it was done, Andrew Carnegie said, I wonder, young man, if you would like to join me in a project. Here's what I'm proposing. You would interview all of the people that I know in positions of wealth and power all over the world. I would open those doors for you. I would connect you with them and get them to grant you the interview. And what I would like you to do is find out the commonalities that all these people share that have allowed them to be successful because, and this was the remarkable idea that Andrew Carnegie had, he believed that success was a skill, that it could be learned. Now, this is something that we take for granted now with the big self-help movement and Tony Robbins and Zig Ziglar and Jim Rohn and all these guys and gals. But this was a unique idea for the time because success was not something one went after and got starting from zero, for the most part, it was believed to be inherited or it came through rank and privilege that one already had through one's family or other connections. The idea that a person could study the principles of success and become successful on their own was unique. So Carnegie wanted this young reporter to assemble a book, really, a course on how to be successful. This was 1917, remember. And here's the real bomb that he dropped on this young kid. He said, I'm not gonna pay you. All the money you need to live on, you're gonna to have to earn yourself, including travel to go interview these people. Now, the reason Carnegie said this was not because he was cheapskate. He felt that a person who's gonna write a book about success should actually be able to prove out and use the principles in the book to take care of himself. Seems like a reasonable belief. So he told the young man, I need your decision now, like right now. And the young reporter leaned back in his chair, took a deep breath and thought about what had been proposed to him. Little did he know that under the desk where Carnegie sat, 
Carnegie was holding a watch in his hand and he was watching the second hand sweep around the dial because he had decided to give this young reporter 60 seconds to make up his mind and make a decision because Carnegie believed one of the principles that was going to be in this book was the principle of decisiveness, being able to make a big important decision quickly. With one second left, Napoleon Hill said yes, I will take on the project. And thus was born a legendary book that changed Hill's life and millions of other lives. But it wasn't quite that simple. You see, the first attempt at writing this book resulted in a very large, well, resulted in this, the law of success was not well received by the marketplace. Too big, many people said. So they split it up encyclopedia style into volumes and that didn't work out so well either. So this was, this publication took place seven years after Hill began the project. And by the time he eventually published a slimmed down summary version of the entire book called Think and Grow Rich, by the time this volume was published, 20 years had passed. 20 years! Now, here are the lessons that I take from this little story. Some of which you may have heard before, but most people don't know the part about the one minute to make the decision and about the 20 years it took to actually get to Think and Grow Rich. One, the value of making a big decision fast. And this is not as scary as it seems because Follow along with me and see if you don't think this is true already. I believe we almost always know what the decision is instantly. The moment the question is posed to us, we know what we're going to say. We may need to wrestle with it for a while. We may need some time to get up the courage to give the answer that we're going to give. We may not want to do it even though we know we need to do it. But I believe we know what the right decision is. Whether we actually end up having the courage to make the right decision or not is another discussion, but I believe we know. Hill had the courage to make the decision he knew he needed to make, even though he knew it was taking on a hardship. He wasn't making a lot of money to begin with, and he certainly wouldn't be making any money from this book while he was writing it, but he decided to do it anyway. So being decisive, especially when you know what the right decision is, even if it's a hard one, even if it's a scary one, a tough one, an expensive one, if you know it's the right thing to do, you should go for it. That's what I take from this story. Lesson number two from this story, the power of persistence. I have to ask myself, if this had been me in the story, and if I had said yes, would I have stuck it out for 20 years? Would I have even stuck it out for the first seven to get this gigantic volume written? And would I have been discouraged if it didn't sell the first couple of times we tried to publish it? I don't know. But I do know that Napoleon Hill stuck it out for 20 years. And then he became world famous as the author of Think and Grow Rich. Millions of lives have changed and 81 years later, we're still talking about his book. It's still on the bestseller list, even though Napoleon Hill is no longer alive to promote it. So the power of persistence, sticking with a project even 20 years. If you know it's your project, it's your message, it's your calling, when you know that, you need to stick with it, like Napoleon Hill. And the third lesson I take from this story is we never know when we're being tested. We may have an opportunity placed before us, and it's a test to see, do we really want the things we ask for, the things we pray for, the things we say we want? We say we want success, we say we want significance, we say we want these things, but do we really want them? I believe. Often we are being tested and we don't know it. Napoleon Hill did not know he was being tested. How about the last time you were tested? Are you sure you know when that was? And more importantly, will I recognize the next time I'm being tested? I hope I do. I think I will because I think it'll be a big decision. It'll be a scary decision. It may be a costly decision, a difficult decision. And yet something in me will know this is the right thing. This is what I need to do. When I get that feeling, my plan is to dive in and then stick with it. What about you? Are you ready for your next test? Are you in the middle of a test? How will you decide 
And have you had this experience already? Made a big decision in a snap and had it change your life and the lives of others? Share your thoughts, your experiences, your stories below. I can't wait to hear from you. And you're gonna hear from me again sooner than you think because one of the decisions I've made has to do with the frequency of these videos. That's all I'm saying right now. I wanna let my actions speak for themselves. Okay.